Now, deep freezes hitting large parts of America from North Dakota to Texas, forcing energy suppliers to institute rolling blackouts. That's in an attempt to prevent the collapse of power grid networks. The Arctic blast is threatening to crimp crude oil supplies and unleash a rush for everything from propane to heating oil. Bloomberg News' Lynn Doan leads energy coverage in the Americas, and she joins me now. Lynn, thank you so much for joining us. And help us understand to what extent are these blackouts impacting the oil and gas production and how have energy markets reacted? Hi, uh, thank you for having me. They are impacting oil and gas production a lot. Um, I checked a few numbers for you. The U.S. natural gas production total is down more than 20 percent. That's more than 10 billion cubic feet across the nation right now. We reported earlier that U.S. oil production cuts now total more than 2 million barrels. Just for context, we only produce about 11 million barrels a day across the entire U.S. So that is a big chunk of supply that is already off the table. And it doesn't stop at oil and gas. Power plants have been tripping offline since last week. Uh, just yesterday, Texas's grid operator had estimated that 34,000 megawatts of power capacity has now been wiped out by this cold blast. A blast. And for reference, that's like taking 20 nuclear power plants offline all at once. Um, in terms of price impact, I mean, it has been significant. We have seen electricity prices in Texas hit $9,000 a megawatt hour, which is the maximum allowable price in that region four days in a row. Uh, we just reported earlier today that natural gas was traded twice at $999 per million British thermal hmm. units. That is astonishing. It's unheard of. Um, and of course, uh, you know, oil prices have rallied on the news as well. They're at the highest level than they've ever, uh, than they've been in, in over a year now. We've That's never right. seen anything quite like this. Mm -hmm. That, that is absolutely right. I mean, such an impact, but there's even a potential larger impact with these kinds of cold fronts. Now, tell us why uh, others outside of these more immediately affected areas, um, tell us what the impact on them may be. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody should care about this. Um, I'll give you some of the obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Texas is the heart of America's energy industry. Right. Um, it accounts for almost half of the fuel made in the U.S. and supplied. So everybody can expect to see gasoline and diesel prices take um, rise because our gasoline and diesel stocks are going to take a hit around the world, uh, around the country. Mm -hmm. um, we just had a story out today about the potential return of three dollar a gallon gasoline, which we haven't seen in a long time because of the pandemic cutting fuel demand, um, but might end up returning because of this event. Um, also, energy infrastructure is in some ways very connected in the United States. So if the central U.S. is taking all of the natural gas and burning it for heating fuel or for power plant um, fuel, it means that people like in, me in California have less to use. Hmm. So right now we are paying more for it. We're already seeing natural gas prices tick up in places like Los Angeles because supplies are going elsewhere and being diverted. Mm -hmm. I mean, even here in Oakland, we're getting messages from our utility asking us to conserve natural gas use to help people out in the Southwest. Already ahead uh, of time. Speaking, That's interesting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for, yeah. oh, it's, but it's already ahead absolutely. of time. That's what, um, so that's what energy companies are doing outside of the main areas ahead of time. They're having people preemptively try to conserve energy. I mean, it's not necessarily ahead of time. We're in the middle of this crisis oh, and yeah. the utilities in California, I think I saw somebody um, share a notice from a utility out in, in, in the eastern U.S. as well, who are all pleading, uh, pleading with their customers to, mm -hmm. to scale back their energy use so that more of it can flow into places like Texas and the rest of the Southwest. Okay. And so I want to switch gears very quickly. And in the last minute or so, I want to ask you about just the impact of such extreme weather events on the power grid. Um, we haven't seen such extreme weather in many areas until recent years. Many attribute this to climate change. So what could be a potential longer term impact in the last oh, minute? We have I, would, I would absolutely mm -hmm. say that there is a connection to okay. climate change here. I don't want to nerd out too much and bore everybody, but <laughs> we had a great explainer out today on how um, basically the Earth's poles are warming faster than anywhere in the planet. Mm -hmm. And while we don't understand the consequences of that fully, 
Um, what has become very clear is that there is a connection between those poles warming and the extreme weather events that we have seen. The winter in Texas, the extreme heat in California, mm -hmm. the terrible chill that like Japan and India and parts of Europe have seen. Um, I mean, there are a lot of weather patterns that are being upended by the fact that there are huger contrasts mm -hmm. in weather in, in temperatures. And that is really all tied to global warming. So if you're asking, you know, what's in store, we're in store for increasingly extreme weather and events like this. And it's mm -hmm. raising the question of how we prepare for them. All right, Lindon, thank you so much for joining us and breaking all of that down. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.